Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to have a new video for you today. If you're new here, welcome and please subscribe to my channel for more videos. So I'm back and I have Bella and Emma, my two Pomeranians, and I'm Alyssa. And so today we're going to go over all of the brushes that I have for them. And I've kind of collected these over the years, so I'll go over all of my favorites, my not so favorites, and what I use. Um, and for what purpose. So each brush has its own purpose. And also I'll be demonstrating um, you to you how the brushes work. So both of my Pomeranians have different um, styles of hair. So Emma's hair is a little bit more um, fluffy and coarse and Bella's hair is a little more like flat but it's more silky. So I'm excited to show you guys and let's get right into it. Okay, so it's been a few days since I last brushed both my dogs, so it's about time, and um, before brushing, I always start off with this um, deodorizing spray. This kind of helps to like prepare the hair, also smells really nice, and it conditions their hair. Okay, so let's start. I just kind of put my hand over her face and eyes, and then I just spray, and see it comes out in a very fine mist. This one is the brand that I also use for the shampoo and conditioner. It's really nice and, you know, it doesn't have a lot of ingredients, which is good. Okay. Also, I will link all of these products down below. So if you have any questions, um, look in the description bar and you can see all the details about the items that I'm using here today. So the first thing that I have here is a plastic comb. So this plastic comb is something that I use for... Um, cleaning the stuff out of there behind. This is great because you can wash it, you know, you can clean it and you don't really have to worry about it getting dirty because it's easy to wash. So for example, I'll just um, stand Emma up right here and then I'll just brush like the um, poop out or just like, you know, if she has like some dirty stuff. She doesn't have anything right now but I'm just demonstrating. Also, it has like wider sections on one side and then thinner sections on the other. So this one is just easy to get out, you know, get little chunks out and then you can wash it and clean it with soap. Okay? So the second brush that I have is this double-sided brush. This one is my favorite and this is by far my most used brush. So let me show you. It has this kind of, um, these metal bristles on one side and then on the other side it has boar bristles. So for the metal side, I just go through and I brush her entire body. So the main thing when brushing is that you want to get down to the root. This is very important to make sure that there's no knots. So as you can see, I'm just kind of like lightly pushing and like going through her hair. Also, you can kind of hold it down at the beginning of where you're brushing. Okay, so I can already see some hair is starting to come out, and that's just dead hair, so you don't have to worry. You can also just go through, you know, everywhere, and you'll see that it starts to get smoother, and you can check for any knots like this. Okay, so let me show you guys how this one looks with Bella. Okay, so I have Bella here, and I'm just going to spray her down a little bit too, because I want her hair to be prepared for brushing. Okay. So this brush on Bella's silky hair goes through much um, softer and easier. As you can see, she is shedding. The hair is coming out very easily. And the good thing about this brush is that my dogs actually don't mind it. You'll see with some of these other brushes that they really don't like the feeling, but this one is really nice and gentle and it does a great job at taking out the dead hair. Okay, so I'll show you guys now what I used um, this side for. So this side, um, boar bristles are known for collecting like oils from the hair and spreading it around which makes it very shiny and healthy, you know, distributing the oils throughout the hair. So as you guys can see, Bella, show them your ears. Her ears are kind of like um, lumps of hair. They look a little greasy, like when your hair gets greasy, that's how her ears are starting to look. So what I do is I take the boar bristle brush and I just brush through it to evenly distribute the oils that are coming out of the skin. So this helps separate the hair and give it a much fluffier appearance. 
Also, this brush is great for when you're blow drying them. I use this um, at the same time as blow drying so that the hair gets nice and fluffy. So the next brush that I have here is this metal comb. I start out with this, you know, and then I see like, oh, my brush is getting stuck here. So then I'll go with this comb and kind of just like work at it. Also, sometimes since this has much wider bristles, the metal ones, it's always good to check your brushing work with the metal comb. So I just go through and sometimes this might catch hairs that need to be like brushed better. So right now she doesn't have anything that the hair is getting caught on, but I see like that this is still collecting hair, hair because she is shedding. So it's really good to brush the hair to get rid of all of that shedding. Wow, look at that. So, so much is coming out and this one is really easy to take off. You just take it off and then it's, just toss it. Okay, so let me show you how this one works on Emma because her hair is much coarser. For Emma, this brush is good for going through the tail. So I just hold the tail and then brush through this kind of section. This brush is, does an okay job, but it kind of works in bigger areas. So you can just grab the whole tail like this. But for this one, you can get much more precise. So her hair, see, it does have some like resistance. That means that it's good that I'm using this to check my work after brushing with this, you know, general brush. Also, I can see a lot of dead hair coming out. So make sure when you're brushing, you just use gentle, slow strokes, not to hurt or scare your dog. Especially, you know, once you brush them regularly, you'll learn kind of where they um, start to develop knots quicker. So I know she tends to get knots behind her ears, so I'll just go and like make sure I didn't miss any there. And also, underneath her armpits, this brush is good because it's getting in the small... Let me show you. This brush is good because it's getting in like this small area underneath here. Like, this one is quite big, you know, it's good for like general brush. Then this one, more, much more refined. Okay, so my next brush is this double-sided comb. So this is similar because it also, like this one, it has the bristles kind of closer together and then this one is wider. But this one is just on one side, they're wider, and then one side they're thinner. Also, this one has like a little bit pointed ends. And I'll tell you guys something about this brush that it's not my favorite. For some reason, it doesn't catch the clumps. And it just like really sticks to the hair. So look at this one. It's, you know, like it's pulling the hair almost. This one glides much more easily. And I still feel that I'm going to the root uh, with both brushes. So this one is pulling the hair. For Emma, this brush is not my favorite, but let me show you how it works on Bella's hair. So since Bella's hair is much silkier and it's not as thick together, this brush actually works pretty good and it's very similar to the other metal um, comb. So this one, let me show you, both sides go through smoothly and it's collecting a lot of dead hair. There we go. So this one is works, works just as good. So if you have a Pomeranian or a small dog with hair similar to Bella, then this is also a good option. But if you have one with more fluffy, thick hair like Emma, then I would stick to this kind of metal comb. Another super important brush, this is a toothbrush. One that you might not have thought that I would include, but it's super important because your dog's teeth need to be cleaned daily or like at least every other day as much as possible. This is such a good brush because it's very, very small. So for small dogs, this one gets in the back and it also has like this kind of um, bent shape so you can get into their back teeth without really having to, um, you know, move the brush in a difficult way. So I'll link this one below. This is one that I highly recommend, especially for small dogs like Emma. This one works the best. I have two more toothbrushes that I wanted to mention. This one is a double-sided toothbrush. It has a small head here and then a very big one. So if you have a much larger dog, this one would be a good option. I use the smaller one for Bella because she has a little bit bigger teeth. So it's good to brush her. <laughs> I think she smells some toothpaste. 
And then um, I have this finger brush that I tried, but I don't really like it and I wouldn't recommend it for small dogs because it is quite large. And actually I found that it's very slippery and it doesn't brush the teeth well. So let's see if I can demonstrate how I brush. So you just kind of pull up the gum and then go like this. So she's actually letting me brush a bit. But like I feel like it just like slides around on your finger. It's quite large so it just doesn't work well for me. This brush, it is good and it cleans it much better. She doesn't like being <laughs> getting brushed but whatever. It's something you have to do. Okay? And then this tiny one is, of course, good for getting in the small areas and for smaller dogs like Emma. Stay. So the next brush that I have here, this is actually a flea comb. And I don't really use it for, I don't think I've ever used it for fleas actually because they don't have fleas that I put their medicine on. But this works so good because it's very, very fine between the metal bristles. So when the hair is clumped like between the ears I just brush it through and it really helps to separate the hair so not when you have matted hair but more so when you want to just fluff up the hair this really helps to separate another um, time when I use this brush that I find very useful is in very tiny areas like around the eyes so sometimes like my dogs they have a little bit of the eye leak and it gets crusty so this brush is super tiny and I just use it to kind of brush carefully through and it gets off the crusty red clumps. So I see she does have a little bit of crusty stuff there so I just go super carefully and I see that a tiny bit of it came off. Super, super carefully. You don't want to poke them in the eye. Okay. So it all came off. And, you know, this is good for getting in those tiny, precise areas, like around the eyes or on the face. So next, I have two slicker brushes. So when I first got Bella, I was trying out all these different brushes, and I got these two because I wasn't sure, you know, which one would work better. But I finally realized that this is the winner. So this kind of brush has very, like, sharp bristles, and they're very thin but they collect the hair well, so like all the shedding hair. So let me show you guys how this works with Emma. So this one does tug a little, but that's, you just have to go super slow. So this one doesn't take out as much hair for Emma, so that's why I actually recommend just using this kind of brush for Emma's thick hair. This brush is useless. It is the same kind of idea supposed to work like this one but the bristles are much too thick they also have little rounded knobs at the end so I don't recommend this one because it doesn't really take out the hair good at all it goes much too quick through the hair to grab anything so I can see like nothing is coming out so I wouldn't recommend this also this one well they both have it but this one has like this cleaning feature so you just push it and it takes off all the hair you can just grab it easily and you don't have to poke your fingers so let me show you how this one works on Bella because this is a lifesaver for her when she's shedding it takes off so much hair and so quickly compared to all the other ones okay so it actually is Bella's shedding season so you'll see how well this works okay Bella so sit Okay, wow, that's so quick. So much hair. And this is all dead hair. It's not just like pulling her live hair. But I'll tell you guys something about this brush is that it's not Bella's favorite. She doesn't really like to sit and be brushed with this. And it took her a while to get used to it. As you can see, she's like kind of like trying to avoid being brushed. But I have to brush her still because the hair will just be all over the house. I just try to do it quick and... <laughs> you see it. I'm just trying to brush it quick. And look a few times of brushing and look how much hair came off. So now I can show you guys. I just push this button and then you can collect all the hair that came off. Super easy and simple. So this is really why I wanted to show you guys 
how each brush works on both of my dogs just because their hair is so different and you know you have to find out which brush works best for your own dog but I hope this might help some people. Next I have this mat remover. This is good if your dogs get like matted hair. For example, if I didn't brush her for like a really long time or if I just you know, missed a spot or I feel like when they're puppies their hair gets matted more, you end up with a, a clump in the hair. The hair is like very tangled. So you use this kind of tool to kind of brush through and cut it away. If your hair, if the dog's hair is not matted, you don't use this because it's a basically a little razor and it cuts to the mat. So also with this, you have to be super careful because it does hurt like the dog a bit. You have to go slowly and like just work at it for a while. So let me demonstrate how this works. So you find the mat, for example, if she had one here, you slide it underneath the mat. So if it's really close to the skin, it's going to be a challenge. But you slide it underneath the mat and then kind of rock it back and forth and pull it through. So also it might just take a couple of times, but you just have to work at it and this does eventually get it out. If it's just so bad, then you just have to cut it and wait for the hair to grow back. But you really just want to start with brushing, you know, regularly so that you don't develop mats, so that your dog doesn't develop mats. This is the last brush that I have to talk about, and this is a de-shedder tool. So this is good if you have like a big dog or a small dog that just sheds a lot, but I want to warn you that I would not use this kind of brush with a double-coated breed. So I bought this brush a while ago when like shed, uh, Bella was going through an extreme shedding period because I was like, oh, I'm trying every brush. I want to find something that will finally help her stop shedding. And after I used this, she looked bald. So what this does is that it basically kind of cuts the hair. And I don't really want to use it um, because, you know, she's going to have like a bald spot there. But I'll just show it like from underneath. So it does take a lot of the hair off. But what you don't realize is that it actually cuts the live hair too. So that's why I don't recommend this brush. But if you have like maybe a pug or some kind of um, breed that doesn't have that thick double coated hair, then this might be an okay option. Okay, so I showed you guys all of the tools that I use, all the brushes and their different purposes and how they work on both of my dogs. So now I just wanted to go over some quick um, questions that I get and just like some other comments that are helpful to um, brushing your dog. So firstly is that um, my dogs are obviously, you know, trained. Like they didn't come ready to be brushed and it takes time for your dogs to get used to being brushed. So when I first got Bella, oh my goodness, I could not brush her. She would just run away and bite me and do all this crazy stuff. and. I had to get her used to it so I, you know you have to brush them frequently and make it a positive experience for your dog. Give them treats, praise them, say good girl Bella, good girl Emma and brush them at the same time. I see I'm brushing her gently and petting her and um, also you have to figure out which brush works best for your dog. So for example she really hates this brush. But now that I've been using it more and more, and this actually works best to getting her for getting her dead hair out, she's much more tolerating of it. She still doesn't like it, but she's like, we'll sit there and accept it. Also, I just try to do it quick so that I don't torture her for long. So how often should you brush your dog? So brushing your dog is different from grooming your dog. I mean, it's kind of similar, but I count grooming as trimming and bathing. While well, brushing it needs to be done much more frequently every uh, week or every couple um, days. So their hair doesn't get tangled too quickly. I find that I can get away with once a week if I brush it really good and like down to the root and make sure I don't miss any spots. So this probably takes about 20 minutes for each dog. Okay, so I think that's all I have to say about my Pomeranians and all their brushes. So if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments and I'd be happy to answer. Also, like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. If you have any video ideas or suggestions, I'd be happy to hear them. Thank you guys so much from all of us. Bye!